Well, he's got the moves, he's got the looks and two Indy 500 winner's rings. He also has an enormous fan base. But this week, there was something revealed about Elio Castro Neves that none of us knew anything about. Friday, the Brazilian was mobbed by the media on his way into a Miami courtroom. He was there to plead not guilty to federal tax evasion charges for allegedly failing to report five and a half million dollars of income from 1999 to 2004. Castro Neves was released on $10 million bail, but is unlikely to compete in the upcoming IndyCar Series race in Australia because he is not permitted to leave the United States. His sister, who is also his business manager, and his attorney, Alan Miller, are also charged. Castro Neves spoke after his court appearance. I'm going to treat this matter uh, like a race, like a challenge race. I'm very um, uh, disappointed that um, IRS matters have to be decided on court. I do not understand about income tax rules. I know the difference between right and wrong. And I did not do anything what those guys saying. Um, again, I am a race car driver. I'm going to treat this like a race. Amazingly, Castro never showed how well he was able to put this tumultuous week to the back of his mind as he and Penske teammate Ryan Briscoe won the P2 class at Petit Le Mans at Road Atlanta on Saturday. More on that coming up shortly. In more news from the courts, Paul Tracy has filed suit against former employer Forsyth Racing and its owner Jerry Forsyth. The suit claims that PT is owed more than $2.3 million under the terms of the five-year contract extension he signed in 2006. 2003 car champion drove for Forsyth and Champ Car's last race at Long Beach this year and finished fourth in the Edmonton IndyCar race while driving for Tony George. The Speed Report is driven by BF Goodrich Tires. Take control and brought to you in part by Advance Auto Parts. Keep the wheels turning. Peugeot has decided to cross the Atlantic and rekindle its rivalry with Audi in the Petit Le Mans. Peugeot adds to what might be the most technologically diverse and ambitious field of sports car machinery ever assembled. With Audi already having clinched the LMP1 Drivers' Championship, the fight for the overall win is on. That said, there are still three titles up for grabs in the American Le Mans Series. LMP2 is separated by just five points, and GT1 is between the two Corvette racing entries. The GT2 points gap is 28, but with 14 hours of racing left in the season, anything can happen. The American Le Mans Series' last big endurance race of the year, Petit Le Mans at Road Atlanta, was billed as the final showdown of 08 between Audi and Peugeot, and it didn't disappoint. It was an amazing demonstration of speed isn't always the winning ingredient. Major drama prior to the start of the race with last year's champion and defending race winner Alan McNish throwing his Audi into the wall. This caused a major repair for the Audi Sport North America team as McNish limped back to the pits. This is before they even gritted up. The race had started. McNish was two laps down when he ended the track. We'll rejoin that story later. Huge drama and a bad day for Acura. It all began here with Scott Sharp and his Patron Highcroft Acura done in the first half an hour of the race. Penske came with force, three Porsche RS Spiders, and that paid dividends. Biggest crash of the race that was marred by many and 11 cautions, and Frank Montagne was right in the middle of it, center of your frame. That was another, that was the third Acura gone at that stage. In GT1, only two Corvettes in this race, and boy, did they fight hard, like always. And Johnny O'Connell, Ron Fellows, and Yad Magnussen prevailed for yet another Petit Le Mans victory. In GT2, arch rivals Risi Competizione and Flying Lizard. They went at it again, but it was the Ferrari that prevailed. A Le Mans win and a Petit Le Mans win in 2008. Back to the headline story. McNish was brilliant on strategy, and so too was his Audi team. That was one of his two laps back right then and there. And then he worked hard, great strategy, got another one back. It brought us into the nighttime hours. The final 90 minutes, they handed it to McNish, and he began to hunt down his Audi teammate Marco Werner and Peugeot's Christian Clean. Clean, the former F1 driver, had McNish all over him until this point. Up into turn six, and McNish got by. Werner almost got by the Peugeot as well. 190 miles an hour, and Clean goes off on the grass. Can you believe it? McNish crushed his soul, though, and went on to get a gripping finish, perhaps one of the best in the diminutive Scot Scotsman's career. So there you go, your respective class winners. 
It was a fifth for Capello, a fourth for McNish, and a third for Pirro. Quite an outstanding result. Briscoe and Castro Nevis getting their first win at Petit Le Mans in P2. I mentioned the other winners in GT. One of the most memorable Petit Le Mans you will ever see. And tonight, Alan McNish, I would also say, is probably the best drive I have ever seen out of you. How special was tonight's victory? It is very special. You see the smile on my face before the race when I crashed on the way to the grid. And I'll tell you, I thought the race was gone. I thought it was done and dusted. I got the car back, and uh, the champion team did the best job ever uh, to repair the car because there was, the front was damaged, the rear was damaged, and they had to basically rebuild it in 45 minutes. We're two laps down. They played the real strategy game and he got us to the position with uh, one hour to go we were right behind the leaders and after that it was down to me just to attack and we had to attack with one round remaining in the american Le Mans series all drivers titles were wrapped up on saturday in georgia the p1 class was clinched the previous round meanwhile romain dumas and timo bernard grabbed their second consecutive p2 crown johnny o'connell jan magnuson are the gt1 champions while jorg bergmeister and wolf hensler are number one in GT2. Here's Dorsey Schrader and Calvin Fish with more. Well, a spectacular day of racing here at Road Atlanta, the 11th running of the Petit Le Mans. And I've seen Alan McNish put in some spectacular drives during the course of his career, but Dorsey today didn't start off well. Talk the story through for us, an amazing moment here at the end. Unbelievable moment when McNish took the car out for its formation lap, had cold tires, got on the throttle in the S's, had a big crash, very big crash, damaged the front of the car, damaged the back of the car. This moment's before the start. The Audi guys did a great job. They repaired the car. He lost two laps, but then McNish got behind the wheel and he showed us magic. And the P2 battle, Acura came in here with a four-point lead in the manufacturer's chase. And they had four cars in the field. The Porsches had five. And Penske come up with a one, two, three finish. That was surprising. Talk about the day for Highcroft. Acura had a horrible day. You know, Scott Sharp on cold tires, or maybe he had a problem with suspension. Under the bridge, he comes, loses the car, hits the bridge. Their day is done. That was just one of four of the cars that went out that day. Well, all the driver titles are now wrapped up. We move on to the final round at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca in a couple of weeks. There's still a few titles up for grabs. Stick with us and we'll show you more. You know, when Elio Cachanevas wins, he's going to climb a fence. No, big <laughs> fence is here in Road Atlanta. He found a small one, but he gets the job done with his teammate, Ryan Briscoe. <laughs> he he kind of had to grab Ryan's hand there and entice him <laughs> yeah, to do it. On. He said, no, why not? Hey, that's the uh, Speed Report. I'm Lee Diffie. I'm Ralph Jean. So long, everybody. See you next week. You've been watching the Speed Report, driven by BF Goodrich Tires. Take control.